The second half of this episode will cover parts of games I have already played, starting with the Super Nintendo and Mega Drive parts of Fatal Fury King of Fires. We're starting with the SNES version here, or more specifically the Super Famicom version. A PAL copy of this game is very pricey, especially boxed at around £150. By comparison, the Japanese copy I bought and the Super Famicom I bought to play it on cost me about £45 altogether, less than a third of the current price of a complete PAL copy. So I'm not going into detail on the game again, just the quality of the parts, otherwise I'd just be repeating my first video. A big change to this part of the game is the removal of the two lane system. To be honest, I didn't really notice. In the original release it's not like the game couldn't function without it, but it does set the tone for the quality of this release, as even the Mega Drive version with more content cut kept the lanes. Graphics took a slight downgrade, but it still looks okay. The music took a huge hit though. Most of it sounds awful. The biggest victims to me were the themes of Duck King, Richard and Geese. But it wouldn't be much of a problem if the game played just as well. But it doesn't at all. Everything feels very off. Special moves felt even more finicky than they did in the original version. Things are a bit slower, not just in movement but in registering my inputs. I simply did not enjoy playing this part at all. It's also one of those games that has an option for unlimited continues, but it's not the default one. So I had to redo my Terry playthrough after running out of Raiden. Thanks for respecting my time. The cutscenes between fights are also scaled down to just Geese's mugshot and some text. The character isn't kidnapped and taken to Geese after defeating Billy, his mugshot simply slides in from off screen. He doesn't even look at you, impolite prick. In terms of new content, the old bonus stage was removed and replaced with a tire smashing game. It's just an inferior version of the Street Fighter 2 barrel minigame. The one saving grace that could have made this part worthwhile, they still bungled. While Terry, Andy and Joe are still the only playable characters in an arcade playthrough, the other 8 characters can all be played as in versus mode, but there's a catch. For one, only the second player can choose the rest of the cast by pressing down on the character select. Player 1 is stuck with just the 3 main characters. Second, there is no human versus computer in versus mode, meaning I can't truly get a feeling for how they might play. So here I am, stuck as player 2 demonstrating special moves against an unresponsive opponent. This honestly baffles me. Why lock one player out of over two thirds of the cast, but not the other? This is one of the most incompetent decisions I've seen doing this show. This especially sucks for Hua Jai, who, spoiler, isn't in the Mega Drive part, so this was his only playable appearance for over 20 years. I'll list their movesets, but I won't go into how they play because I have no clue. Richard can't crouch or throw. He has a rolling kick with quarter circle forward, up forward and kick, and his handstand kick with charge down, up and punch. Michael can't jump or throw. His tornado upper is done with half circle up and punch, he has his tempest brush repeatedly tapping punch, and he has a rip off of Balrog's dash upper, the gust dash upper, with charge back forward and punch. Duck King has his head spin with charge back forward and punch, and his back drop with half circle forward and grab. Tung Fu Ru can crouch and throw, and automatically changes into his buff state if he takes enough damage. When normal he has his Sen Shippo with quarter circle back and punch, when buff he has his Sen Pukem with charge back forward and punch, and his Sen Pukiak with charge down up and kick. Quajai automatically becomes drunk after taking enough damage. His backbreaker is half circle back and grab, and his dragon kick is quarter circle forward, up forward and kick while drunk. Raiden has poison mist with half circle forward and punch, and his hanging ball with quarter circle forward, up forward and punch. Billy can't, see what I did there? Crouch or throw. His Senpukon is charge back forward and punch, and his Shuten Renpakon is done by repeatedly tapping punch. Finally, Geese has his Repuken with half circle forward and punch, and a choke with quarter circle forward, up forward and punch. Once again, total let down. Now just to beat the game again. We see the character kick Geese as usual, but no falling. The game just fades to black and gives the usual arcade text ending. All I can say after playing this part is that I'm so glad I didn't fork out the money for a PAL copy. Yeah, I spent the extra £30 on the Super Famicom, but that also opens up my options in what games I can cover for this show. There was no reason for this part to be so shoddy. The SNES parts of the Street Fighter 2 games came out great, and the console also had an almost perfect part of Mortal Kombat 2. It could have handled this game. Although as crappy as this is, it's still not the worst fighting game on the system so far. I'd still play it over the first Dragon Ball Z Super Butoren. The Mega Drive part was only released 3 months after the Super Nintendo part, but it's a lot better. Part of the reason I was so disappointed in that part was because I actually recorded this part first. 
This game is slower than the original version, and it took a bigger hit in the graphics than the SNES version did, but it's still responsive enough that I had a good time. Not to mention, the game's difficulty is tweaked to fit these changes. The lane system is kept too. Music still took a hit, but it's mostly better than the Super Nintendo parts, although I do feel that Richard's and Geese's themes sound even worse here. Also, Terry and Andy sound like little kids when they win. Okay. Yeah. The biggest downside is that Hua Jai and Billy Khan are missing, making Raiden the reigning KOF champion and the final obstacle before Geese. Hua Jai does take Richard's spot in the background of Duck King's stage, but Billy is nowhere to be seen at all. This does not mean a shorter arcade playthrough though, as the other two characters you didn't choose will simply challenge you a few fights in. Speaking of arcade, even the cutscenes are preserved, so the Super Nintendo port really had no excuse. They didn't fix the typo in Raiden's name. But the best part is that both players can now choose every character, and there's Human vs AI in the versus mode. These characters also have slightly different move lists and inputs too. Michael's Tornado up is now down back, quarter circle forward and punch, and he has the Gust straight punch with the same charge back forward punch as the SNES Ghost Dash upper. I'm really glad to be able to play as Michael here because this is the last chance. After being made playable in the console parts, he has never been playable again to this day, existing only in cameos. Richard's only changes are his rolling attack being quarter circle forward and kick, and his handstand kick now being quarter circle back and kick. Richard's another one I'm glad to be able to play as properly. As if this show continues for a long time, it'll still be ages before I get another chance. Duck King has his screw attack with charge down up and punch. He's fine, but nowhere near the game I remember him for. Tung has his Kikoken with quarter circle forward and punch, and his Dai Sharin Kyak with quarter circle back, up, back and kick. Tung is just like Duck King, not yet that character I loved playing as when I was first introduced to him. Although the fact I've brought this up with both of those probably gives away the game I'm talking about. Raiden's Poison Mist is now charge back forward and punch, and his Hanging Bull is now quarter circle back and punch. Not much to say about Raiden, but I'll have more chances to talk about him in future. Just like Geese, I have to hold left and press start. It's cool to play as him, but it's not like I get his boss brokenness. He doesn't have his counter for one thing. Plus, we'll be seeing plenty of Geese in the future. I would like to point out his Rapukin voice clip though. It's something. With all that covered, time to beat the game again. The ending is kinda amusing, you essentially just knock Geese off stage like this is a play or something. Rather than talking about Geese's death, we get a little monologue from the character you beat the game as. This isn't a perfect part, but I will be ranking it in the same spot as the original. We do lose things, but the addition of the playable bosses and not putting arbitrary roadblocks on it gives this part some value. I see this part the same way I see the Super Nintendo part of Mortal Kombat 1. It has plenty of flaws, but it'll do if I have no other option. <laughs> 